Welcome to Food for Thought. My name is Colleen Patrick Goudreau from Compassionate Cooks. I founded Compassionate Cooks to empower people to make informed food choices and to debunk myths about vegetarianism and animal rights. I do this through cooking classes, nutrition courses, articles and essays, this podcast, and a cooking DVD I produced last year. You can learn more about who we are and what we do by visiting our website, compassionatecooks.com. Thanks again to those who've left comments on iTunes. It's really a great way to encourage others to listen, and I really appreciate reading your comments. Word of mouth is a powerful thing, and I appreciate whatever you can do to encourage people to listen, or better yet, subscribe to the podcast. I've also received some emails that absolutely make my day. It really means so much to me to hear from you. I'd like to read you an excerpt. I hope I don't embarrass the person who is listening, but uh, I received this a few days ago, and uh, here's just an excerpt from one of the emails I received. I had been an ovo-lacto-vegetarian for over three years until I came across your podcast a few weeks ago. It has blown my mind, to say the least, and has inspired me to become a full-on joyful vegan. I don't know what to say to that. It, I'm the one who's inspired by people like like that person who wrote. I'm inspired by everyone I teach and everyone I talk to because I see what's possible in people. I'm inspired by people who are open and humble and willing to know the truth and to do something about it once they find out the truth. So thank you and thanks to all who are listening. I'd like to spend today's show talking about humane meat. I put that in quotes, which is admittedly my hot button issue. A lot of what I'm going to say is from an article of mine that's in this month's issue of Satya magazine, S-A-T-Y-A, Satya magazine. It's a powerful magazine that focuses on the connections between all social justice issues, and animal rights and vegetarianism. The magazine's website is satyamag.com. That's S-A-T-Y-A-M-A-G dot com. And the article on which today's podcast is based is on their website as well as on my own, CompassionateCooks.com. The title of the piece is called From Cradle to Grave, The Facts Behind Humane Eating. Truthfully, I have yet to meet a non-vegetarian who didn't care about the treatment of animals raised and killed for human consumption. Even people who eat meat are aware on some level that the experience is unpleasant for the animals, and they'll tell you they object to abuse and cruelty. Of course, nobody wants to support that. Nobody wants to believe they're part of it. And instead, many people these days, in fact, almost everybody I hear from who says they eat meat and dairy and eggs, declare that they buy only humane meat. They buy only free-range eggs, and they buy only organic milk perceiving themselves as ethical consumers and these products as the final frontier in the fight against animal cruelty. The fact is, there is no such thing as humane animal products. It's an oxymoron, but everyone says they're buying them. And they're winning the ethical argument. The humane meat proponents are winning the ethical argument. And it's not the vegetarians who are losing, it's the animals. Though we kill over 10 billion land animals every year in the U.S. just to please our palates, we never question the absurdity of this sacred societal ritual. That's probably why we don't question it, because it is so sacred. Instead of talking about the alternatives to just eating animals, which is not eating animals, we absolve ourselves by making what we think are guilt-free choices, failing to recognize the paradox of humane slaughter, and never really knowing what the whole experience is for an animal from cradle to grave, from cradle domestication to grave, our bodies. Though modern animal factories look nothing like what's idealized in children's books and advertisements, there are also many misconceptions about the practices and principles of a humane operation. And again, that's in quotes of an operation that calls themselves humane. The unappetizing process of turning live animals into isolated body parts and ground up chunks of flesh begins at birth and ends in youth because the animals are babies when they're sent to slaughter, whether they're raised conventionally or in operations that are labeled humane, sustainable, natural, free range, cage free, heritage bred, grass fed or organic. They're all killed when they're babies. Let me just give you an idea of what I mean. Pigs are slaughtered at six months. 
Their natural lifespan is six to 10 years. Chickens are slaughtered at six weeks. Their natural lifespan is five to eight years for those bred as egg layers, one to four years for, for factory layer breeds such as leghorns, and one to three years for meat breeds. Now, they're slaughtered at six weeks young, and remember that their lifespan right now is really dependent also on the fact that they're bred in such a way that they grow really large really quickly. So their lifespan in the wild could very well be longer than that, but their bodies are so stressed and so just not natural that they they die very young but six weeks compared to one to four years is still very young turkeys are slaughtered at five to six months young and their natural lifespan is two to six years ducks and geese ducks are slaughtered at seven to eight weeks young their natural lifespan for domestic ducks is six to eight years and geese can live up to 15 years beef cattle they're slaughtered at 18 months young Dairy cows are slaughtered at four or five years young, and their natural lifespan, cattle, their natural lifespan is 18 to 25 years. Veal cows, of course, they're slaughtered at 16 weeks. They're babies, of course, we all know that, and of course, they're cattle, so 18 to 25 years is their natural lifespan. Goats, they're slaughtered three to five months young. Their natural lifespan is 12 to 14 years. Rabbits are slaughtered 10 to 12 weeks young. Their natural lifespan is five to seven years. Lambs are slaughtered at six to eight weeks young for young lamb and under a year for all other lamb. And their natural lifespan is 12 to 14 years. And horses and donkeys, their slaughter age varies because they come from different places. Horses could be from the racing industry or so many places. So their slaughter age varies. Their natural lifespan is 30 to 40 years. There you go. <laughs> Not something most of us think about. That's that's when they're killed. What most people don't think about is whether it's a large or small enterprise manipulating the animal's reproductive systems for human gain is at the heart of the animal agriculture industry. The keeping of male studs, the stimulation of the genitals, the collection of the semen, somebody's got to do this work, folks, the castrating of males, the insemination into the female. These are not exactly on people's minds when they sit down to dine. Many animals endure the stressful, often painful, and humiliating process of artificial insemination. Dairy cows are strapped into what the industry terms a rape rack. Natural turkeys, natural, of course, having no meaning whatsoever and having nothing to do with the treatment of animals, it's a marketing term, have to be artificially inseminated because their breasts are so large they're unable to mate in the usual manner. And free-range egg farms perpetuate unthinkable cruelty by buying their hens from egg hatcheries that kill millions of day-old male chicks every year. Millions of day-old male chicks every year. All of this has to do with ma manipulating the animals reproductive systems and you can find this information including all the slaughter ages and the natural lifespan this is not something that's hidden this is something you can find on um, all sorts of uh, websites you know the industry websites as well as animal sanctuary websites when people talk about humane meat they're really referring to the conditions under which the animals are raised not killed and of course not bred they're not thinking about the the breeding processes and they're also not thinking about the slaughter processes they're thinking specifically about how that animal's life may be maybe when they're alive and there's a big difference when their bodies are fat enough for the dinner table because that's how their lives and their values are measured spent and overused from producing eggs and milk and no longer useful in the way they are meant to be as in the case of male studs on dairy farms, for instance. Animals from both conventional and from those farms that call themselves humane are all transported first to the feedlot, in the case of beef cattle, to the slaughterhouse. The transportation process merits its own podcast, but it's excruciating and often fatal. A huge percentage of pigs, for instance, die on the way to slaughter, and that number is just factored into the economics for the pig industry. So it's it's excruciating, and it's it's fatal for for many 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 animals. The only law designed to protect animals in transport is weak, forcing the animals to endure oppressive heat, bitter cold, stress, overcrowding, respiratory problems from the ammonia laden urine. And because there are so few slaughterhouses these days, they've consolidated. Animals are traveling thousands of miles to where they're killed 
thousands of miles. I don't care what size farm they lived on. They're traveling a long time to get to the slaughterhouse. There are no slaughterhouses where the animals are humanely euthanized people. They're not honored in their death. They're all sent to mechanized slaughterhouses where their lives are brutally ended. By law, animals must be slaughtered at USDA certified facilities where horrific acts of cruelty occur on a daily basis. Everyone from federal meat inspectors to slaughterhouse workers have admitted to routinely witnessing the strangling, beating, scalding, skinning, and butchering of live, fully conscious animals. And these abuses are above and beyond just the horror of the slaughter. We're talking about an incredibly violent, chaotic atmosphere where stressed out workers take all their frustrations out on these animals. Unthinkable, unbearable acts of cruelty that I won't name here, but you can find them in places such as um, a book called Slaughterhouse. On PETA's website, there are undercover investigations, Compassion Over Killings website, Mercy for Animals website, investigations that you can read about or, or watch. When we tell ourselves we're eating meat from humanely raised animals, we're leaving out a huge part of the equation. The slaughtering of an animal is a bloody and violent act, and most of us don't want to see it. Most of us couldn't do it. And death does not come easy for those who want to live. As much as we don't want to believe we're the cause of someone else's suffering, our consumption of meat, dairy, and eggs, and other animal products perpetuates the pointless violence and unnecessary cruelty that's inherent in the deliberate breeding and killing of animals for human consumption. If we didn't have a problem with it, we wouldn't have to make up so many excuses and justifications. We dance around the truth, we label our choices humane, and we try to find some kind of compromise so we can have our meat and eat it too. The fundamental problems we keep running into do not arise merely from how we raise animals, but that we eat animals. Clearly we can survive. Clearly we thrive on a plant-based diet. We don't need to kill animals to be healthy. And in fact, animal fat, animal protein are linked with many human diseases. We know this. What does it say about us that when given the opportunity to prevent cruelty and violence, we choose to turn away because of tradition, because of culture, habit, convenience, or pleasure, we're not finding the answers we're looking for because we're asking the wrong questions. The movement towards humanely raised food animals simply assuages our guilt more than it actually reduces animal suffering. If we truly want our actions to reflect the compassion for animals we say we have, then the answer is very simple. We can stop eating them. How can this possibly be considered anything but a rational and merciful response to a violent and vacuous ritual? Every animal born into this world for his flesh, for her eggs, for her milk, only to be killed for human pleasure has the same desire for maternal comfort and protection, the same ability to feel pain, and the same impulse to live as any living creature. There's nothing humane about breeding animals only to kill them, and there's nothing humane about ending the life of a healthy animal in his or her youth. There's nothing humane about meat or cow's milk or goat's milk or sheep's milk or chicken's eggs. We're only telling ourselves what we need to so that we can sleep at night and so that we can continue to see things not as they are, but as we want them to be. For the animal's sake, my hope is that we can all open our eyes and open our hearts to the truth about the animal agriculture industry. For the animals, I'm Colleen from Compassionate Cooks. Thanks for listening.